Welcome to Hilltop Conversations this 10th day of September 2021. We have a pretty busy broadcast for you today, so we want to get right with it. Uh, Two weekends ago, a group from Hilltop went camping at Walker River State Park uh, down south of Yarrington. Now, Dave Norvell was the leader of that group, and he's here to tell you all about it. Good morning. I'm out here with Don. We're uh, out in the pine nuts right now. Um, I'm here to give you a recap on our camp out at Walker River uh, State Park out past Urington. Uh, Believe it or not, if you look around out here, the weather was kind of like this out there. And in Carson, uh, AQI was in the three or four hundreds. Uh, So the night before the camp out, we were texting back and forth you want to go out and uh, I don't know I don't want to go out but a few of us ended up going out uh, actually 16 of us by the time we all got out there and enjoyed a great weekend out there Uh, so uh, anytime I drive out to the desert I kind of recount the story of the Israelites leaving Egypt you know uh, they didn't have uh, trailers and cars and and all their food with them they had unleavened bread and whatever else they could carry uh, and they just packed up the night before it was time to go and and they went um, they trusted the Lord they trusted what Moses was asking them to do and they just packed up whatever they could and headed out into the desert 600,000 men and their families so that's way over a million people can you imagine that going from Carson City out to Urington. Can you imagine uh, taking that trek with just a donkey and carrying what you can? But uh, they were trusting the Lord at that time. They got to the Red Sea. Uh, Pharaoh's army came up behind them. You think their trust was still there? They, they started questioning what God was going to do. But he delivered them through the sea, the parting of the Red Sea. And... Uh, Pharaoh's army was no more after that. Um, Exodus 15, there's a song they sang. It's like a a long chapter, a long song that they were singing for days and days. But, what, it only took about three days. Bitter water, manna, Moses, where have you taken us? So, uh, yeah, trust in the Lord at times can be hard. But one thing we always have to remember, God is the same, man changes. So that that was part of the devotion that we had on a Saturday night. And then Hoyt went on with a devotion, and he recounted the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and uh, how God saved them from the fire. And there wasn't just the three of them, there was another person in there in the fire with them. Uh, So that's either Jesus or an angel, but but God is always with us, and uh, we always have to remember that. Um, Anyways, rest of the camp out, we had a a great time Friday night playing games, and uh, you kind of find out things about people, you know, how competitive they are at games. I won't mention Sean Cox's name, but he's he's pretty competitive uh, in games, so... uh, we had a, a great fun playing games and uh, racing bikes around with the little kids and uh, playing in the river. Not much of a river there, but we, we had fun in it anyways. Uh, Saturday morning we had egg burritos and sausage. We kind of did a joint breakfast with ev- everyone. And then Saturday night we uh, had a potluck dinner. We had chili and tri-tips, cornbread, salads, and uh, always have s'mores, of course. There was plenty to go around. Um, then our devotion I was telling you about, we had that down by the river. There's a little uh, area set up on the river with logs set out in a, a amphitheater type setting. So it was uh, quiet and peaceful and uh, we had a, a good time of fellowship there. And then uh, back to the camp and more games. And, uh, and then Sunday morning we uh, just all packed up and said our goodbyes and headed back to the smoke. So I hope you all enjoyed the smoke in Carson while we were out there in Urington. Uh, we're looking forward to next year. and uh, uh, It's a nice campground out there. 
but we enjoyed it and had a good time and had good fellowship. And uh, so we hope to see you next year and hope to see you on some hikes. There's a hike tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and we're just uh, keeping it local down at the River Fork Ranch in Genoa. So join us at 8 if you can. Thanks. Thanks so much, Dave. Now, don't forget the hike tomorrow morning. If you want to go 8 o'clock, that's kind of a reasonable hour to get up. And remember to keep in touch with Dave about upcoming hikes and adventures that will be occurring throughout the year. You know, a lot of us like to get out and do things outdoors, especially when uh, you don't have to cut the air with a knife, right? Now, Lisa Potts and Judy Lynn have been faithful to feature one of our missionaries on the church bulletin board and to publish material about that individual or family. And this month's featured missionary is none other than Courtney Kratz. Now, Courtney has served all of us so well uh, as an enthusiastic interviewer on this broadcast. I know I have certainly appreciated her creativity, energy, and love for Jesus uh, so much. Now, though, it's time to turn the tables on her. She usually is the one doing the interviewing. Uh, this time, she's being interviewed. And uh, I asked her the, the basic question of how God grew a heart for mission work in her. And this is her response. Man, that's great. Well, hi. Uh, <laughs> we uh, welcome you to... Hilltop Conversations, hey guys. and uh, yeah, Courtney and I were just talking about how difficult it is to have the shoe on the other foot, and by so that much. I mean, she's usually the one that's doing the interviewing, Yes. now she is the interviewee, and um, uh, you, you may have noticed that Lisa Potts and Judy Lynn have a featured missionary each month, which is really a wonderful way to have missionaries mm -hmm. in front of us. And our featured missionary this month is none other than Courtney. And so how appropriate to uh, <laughs> get you back in front of the camera and, and watching yes. you squirm a little bit. A little no, bit. I'm no, not asking I'm the questions. Only so. <laughs> I'm only kidding. And you don't know what they are. <laughs> not exactly. Yeah, yeah I forgot how this good. feels. <laughs> that's good. I like it. No, seriously, though. Um, you started, uh, I mean, your college career and then your first jobs were in the agricultural sciences, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us just a little bit about that. What, what did you study? What did you major in? Yeah, so I um, took five years for college. Um, I was at Missoula, Montana for two years as a wildlife major and then transferred to UNR as a rangeland major eventually. Mm -hmm. So that was my degrees in rangeland ecology and management. Okay. Um, big words. <laughs> Basically, it's just like the management um, and, and conservation of non-forested lands. Sure. Um, and so I worked for the Nevada Division of Forestry um, for a year and a half, almost two years. Um, my last like year, year and a half of college into my summer. Um, loved that job, got to do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. worked with some amazing people. Um, and then I went, went into missions right after college. So. <laughs> and that's what we want to talk about is, is how did God guide you from really what could have <clears throat> easily been a, a career in rangeland management mm -hmm. to missions? How, how did that happen? It was a pretty gradual um, transition, I would say. Uh, you know, the Lord, I've always said, is, is a gentleman. He's not going to just, like, push and pull into things. And mm -hmm. so he just really shaped my heart those years in college mm -hmm. um, and just started. How so? He just started changing my focus and my passion from from wildlife, you know, because I went from a person that even as a young believer thought that people kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I want nothing to do with him. Well, why don't you beat around the bush and let us really know how you feel. <laughs> I'm going to put it as it is. You guys know I don't sugarcoat things. Um, and so I was like, yeah, wildlife is the way to go. And then um, I'd rather be around I'd rather be animals around the animals. than people. Well, wasn't that a, uh, a, um, a quote by um, 
Oh, it's, it's on a Mark, lot of Mark Twain of like, I'd rather be around my dog or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I was that person. Um, thankfully, Lord changed my heart a lot, and so it was just a transition from range or from wildlife into the bigger picture of okay, there's a bigger issue by, beyond just wildlife into ecology, right, in the mm-hmm. land, and um, I guess it's kind of a leap to that to people, but I don't know. The Lord just really started changing my heart. Um, to have more just of a a love and compassion for others. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved doing ministry work. I've been doing um, youth camps and and volunteering and mentoring and working in youth groups since I was in high school. And so that was always a part of my life, even in college. Um, So it came as no surprise to the Lord, obviously. And it came pretty natural when it started. He started transitioning my interests to more people and ministry work. Um, and I just, I, you know, I felt that, that tugging of the Holy Spirit in me saying that, um, this isn't where I'm calling you into. Um, yeah. and I was, you know, I was happy with my, my job with vision of forestry, but it was still, I just felt like this isn't where God wants me to be, Right. you know? And, and so how um, did it become a little more solidified that missions, because even, you know, regarding people as, oh, Okay, you know, my dog, people, <laughs> all right, I guess people. My but, dog's still but, pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I'm obsessed with my basset hound if you know me, so. <laughs> yeah, we'll show you a picture of her basset hound. But um, anyway, how how did you... Into missions. Yeah, how yeah. did you... That France? came a couple years afterwards, actually. Okay. Um, I had my mentor at the time, um, Debbie. She introduced me to YWAM. Um, this, the fall of 2017, mm-hmm. right like semester before I graduated college. Um, and I had no plans for after college. I knew that like, wasn't really interested mm-hmm. in going into a career in rangeland, but I didn't know what that looked like. And so right. she told me about YWAM. Um, and I looked at the website. It was like, this sounds really interesting and intriguing to me. Um, looked YWAM into YWAM means youth yeah, of the mission. Youth of the mission. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I liked the whole concept of it. I liked, um, just all that was about. And so I looked up Ireland. Uh, that was the only place I wanted to go. <laughs> looked at their base. There's only one base in Southern Ireland. Um, and their, one of their taglines is, are you willing to commit six months of the unknown to God? Mm. Um, and I love that challenge. It, it did challenge me a lot. Um, even up to the day I was flying into Ireland, it was very much a challenge. It was outside my comfort zone. Mm. Um, but again, I felt the Lord calling me into that. And I now, mm-hmm. now expand on that a little bit more because I think a lot of people, if they hear about missions, mm-hmm. that would be one of the first things they would think of is, oh my gosh, you know, it's outside of my comfort mm-hmm. zone. And so how did you deal with that or how did God deal with that as you, you know, mm-hmm. what were you experiencing as you went overseas for the first time? Um, I don't actually think I looked at it as missions when I first went over. Okay. I, it, was a, it was a discipleship training school. Right. It was six months long. Um, there was course, there was coursework, there was an outreach afterwards. And so the outreach I kind of viewed more as, okay, mission work. But as a whole, I don't think I'd fully grasp, but this is missionary work. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just kind of another school course to go into, but tailored into ministry um, and, and discipleship. Um, and I was just ready for change. You know, mm-hmm. I think I've always been a person that wants to keep growing and expanding. And, um, I don't like to stay comfortable for too long. <laughs> I like to be challenged and, and drawn out. And oh, I was very much challenged and mm-hmm. grew a lot in YWAM. Um, what was so, uh, one of the, the greatest challenges that you faced? Um, that's a good question. There was a lot. Um, I think one of the biggest is dying to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the jokes in DTS is it doesn't just stand for discipleship training school. It stands for die, die, to, die to self. self. Mm-hmm. And I told a couple of you guys, some of my friends, um, that I really hated that turn of phrase when I first started my school. Um, I was like, that is, that doesn't sit right with me. You know, that was, it was just like, I really struggle with that. And there was some pride in that as well. And, uh, again, God just grew me and I had to just die to myself and submit myself before the Lord and also just serving others in my school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And so by the end of my DTS, that was my mantra, (laughs) you know, something that I really clung to. And by dying to myself every day and serving God in his strength um, and and others, I had the best time of my life over there, you know? So a lot of... What was maybe one of the most memorable experiences spiritually for you in serving. Mm. Now you were in Ireland, but you mm-hmm. also went 
to Lebanon, Lebanon mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so, so really that's two questions rolled into <laughs> one. Um, in both Ireland and mm -hmm. Lebanon, what was one of the most memorable, sp you said you mm -hmm. had, it was one of the best times yeah. of your life. What made it so spiritually? Um, let's see. There was, um, there's one week, because there's a different uh, topic we learn or go through every week in, in our this three month session. Um, one of them is called Original Design. And we went to Ross Trevor in Northern Ireland for that. And we combined schools for that week, because there's a team from England that comes in and teaches that. Um, and I remember that week was just very powerful and eye opening um, because it's a whole week teaching on your original design and how God originally designed you to be. How, and it's again, it's original. And um, they have two or three different prayer sessions. And the first one is they, you go to, into a group of people that don't know you um, and they, they're trained and they're very experienced in just like hearing from God and, and discernment and all that. Mm -hmm. And they would pray over us um, individually and, and that one identifying a foothold that we had. Um, and it like made an sense. an area of weakness. An area of weakness, yeah. yeah. And um, it was all from the Lord because people don't know you at all. And right. so it was just God speaking through them to us. And so for me, um, seeing that foothold, I was like, oh yeah, that's definitely a foothold. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the second session was um, God showing us more of our original design and the team that we were with, um, the group of people would be praying and God would just give them images or visions or pictures or scripture, whatever it was, um, to just encourage us and, and to reveal more of our original design. And that was very eye-opening. I've never had an experience like that before. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of to back up from that even, there was just a lot of intentional prayer over us students yeah, um, from our team, from our leaders and, and the staff. And so um, just having that intensity, I've never had that before. And having people pray over me hmm. um, and say, I feel like God's telling me this or showing me this was really powerful and beautiful. And with the original design, um, just to see how much God loves me and that he took the time to... <laughs> just the details that he woven in me and my right. personality and my strengths and just how he created me. I was like mind blown that the creator of the universe that, you know, breathes out stars for a living, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> fashion little old me and like down to every detail um, was very moving. And it helped me to just want to crave more of that and to step into more of my original design, you know, to be more Christ-like through how he made me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to, to help die to myself. And so I think in Ireland, that was a, a really standout moment for me as well. There was a lot of them, but that one was really spectacular. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, um, and so from that, you've, you've actually been to Ireland and then Lebanon twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this third time that was supposed to happen, COVID. It's been kinda, canceled three times. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So after these experiences mm -hmm. in Ireland and Lebanon, how, how did you feel or know mm -hmm. that, because it's more than a feeling. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you know that God was calling you into missions mm -hmm. as, as kind of a, full-time thing yeah that's a good question um daryl daryl and carolyn actually asked me that same thing when i visited them really? um because they've been in missions for many decades and they're like how how do Almost you know 60 years yeah. yeah and so i was like that's a really valid question um it was mm -hmm. kind of right in my face for a while and i just didn't see it um because after my first tour or time with ywam um, I thought I would just get back to real life <laughs> yeah. and get a real job and, right. see, you know, whatever that looked like. Mm -hmm. And then I got asked to staff and I was like, oh, okay. Um, prayed about that for a while. Staff obviously. of YWAM. Staff of YWAM. Got it. And um, obviously felt Lord saying, yes, go do that. Mm -hmm. And um, that again was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Um, just, I, it was so fulfilling and just an incredible experience to be able to mentor and just and disciple these four young adults. Um, and with my co-leader, Olivia, that was, it was amazing. I could go on for that for hours. Mm -hmm. um, and but so, we won't. We well, won't. we won't. Yeah. You guys can come ask me personally if you want to hear the long story. 
Um, <laughs> She'll even get you a cup of coffee. I'll buy you a coffee yeah. and just tell you all about it. It's <laughs> <laughs> my love language is just like a cup of coffee a with someone, coffee. honestly, or a latte. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, but it was after that. Um, but I was, I was praying for a while, even during that time as a staff was, God, what do you want me to do? Like, where are you calling me into my life? Like, what direction do you have for me? Um, and I think it was in, in March or April after I got back, um, that I felt like the Lord woke me up one night, just middle of the night and just kind of spoke that to me, put it on my heart and Mm. said, I'm calling you into missions full time. And, um, it just gave me kind of a vision and image of what that looked like. And it made so much sense. Like it was yeah. right in front of me this entire time and I just hadn't seen it. And just the way that God has created me and the things that I love to do and my strengths and my passions, um, it made so much sense that this is where God's calling me into. Well, tell us a little bit about your dream uh, mission vocation. In other <laughs> words, uh, uh, if you could tomorrow be serving the Lord mm-hmm. in in a mission capacity of some type what what would it look like in your now of course in my dream it's good to have world. a dream and then and then god yeah god takes it and does what he wants but mm-hmm. uh, but it's good to have one so what would that look like um someday um i would love or my vision or dream i guess would be even to be run my own ywam school um i I'm very much open to other missionary organizations right now. Um, and we can talk about that later, but I, I really love the structure of YWAM and their, their discipleship training schools. Cause it, it changed my life drastically mm-hmm. and it has changed the students that I've seen, um, and discipled. And so it would be amazing one day to open up a base, maybe in the States, somewhere in the Western world, you know, mountains and, have land and be able to almost kind of connect my love of nature and you know that rangeland uh, ecology coming in yeah, and yeah. with with discipleship and with that school because um, I know myself and a lot of people really connect to God through His creation sure. and so it would be amazing to be able to run DCS schools out of like a beautiful ranch or something location and a um, discipleship training mm-hmm. outdoor school yeah something like that would be really neat and then yeah. go run outreach into other countries. Um, from there. From there, yeah. You know, especially wow. Lebanon would be really neat. Wow, that's quite, uh, <laughs> that's quite the vision. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we, mm-hmm. we will be praying about that. Um, on a more short-term basis, what, what would be, what do you think might be your next mission venture? Since, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately this YWAM uh, why am Ireland canceled yeah. three times, which is, you know, it can be discouraging. But on the other hand, it could be God opening another door. Yeah, and, and I, so, I very much feel like he's opening another door right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, um, looking into Africa, into Kenya, um, when we had the Angugas come and visit, if you guys remember our missionary conference, uh, I really connected with Andrew and Stephanie and I, I could see the the vision of what they're doing with One Life Africa and with students over there. And um, again, the discipleship aspect of that school really intrigues me. And it, um, mm-hmm. it just, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to go check them out, hopefully in January, um, and see more of what their school's about and if that's somewhere that God's calling me to be. So. Well, well we will pray about that. So it looks like January, you'll be going to Kenya. Yes. And and, and what's really exciting to me, and it kind of grew out of the um, mission conference as well, but it's also what God is doing around the world yeah. is that um, the next wave of missionaries mm-hmm. to unreached people groups, uh, and, and God is doing amazing things in the Muslim world. But so for instance... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, missionaries to people in the Muslim world are going to be not Americans mm-hmm. and they'll be st- like the students from Kenya yeah heading out and so it's, it's gonna a, it's be amazing. really exciting to see what uh, mm-hmm. what God does through through those students it and is so equipping mm-hmm. them realizing they're going to be uh, on yeah. the vanguard mm-hmm. of mission work in the future yeah I love that that model it's it's effective um, and it 
it's just it's amazing how much it's spread so that's actually one of the things that i really struck me with um oc um yeah is is their method of of training up the nationals you know the local people of whatever country or region they're at to to go and evangelize and disciple their own nation and seeing how that spread over the decades wow the lord has blessed that it's amazing <laughs> Well, in fact, we're going to use this as a um, segue and we'll do this as a second part where we ask uh, Courtney part two. about uh, part two, yeah, <laughs> about um, what she has gleaned from the missionaries that she's visited this summer. So, mm -hmm. but thank you so much for sharing with us now. Yeah, you're welcome, Don. It's been good. <laughs> Thanks so much, Courtney, for sharing your story and your heart for the Lord and for mission work. And we are going to be praying uh, for God to open just the right door for you to serve Him in missions. Now, in the second part of my interview with Courtney, which we'll see next time, we'll discover what Courtney learned by visiting. She visited uh, our three missionaries that are located here in North America, the Platts, the Olsons, and the O'Briens, and she learned something from each one of them. Now, next time we will also follow her to Boise, Idaho, for her time with Matt and Kim O'Brien, who served there with Crew. Crew is formerly Campus Crusade for Christ. Matt is the uh, campus director there. And we will listen in on their conversation about their own growth with their walk with the Lord, uh, what it was like to raise children, and reach out to college students at the same time. Now, tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. We have been invited to participate in a set special service to honor those who fell uh, in that, those events. And this service will take place at Valley Christian Fellowship in Minden tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And uh, you are all invited to attend. Don't forget the picnic and baptism on Sunday right after the second service at church. Now, I know while we can't uh, have this event at Lake Tahoe, Dave Norvell has set up the baptistry in a pretty special spot outside. And it's going to be a wonderful day. And please be sure to stick around for the baptisms. We have the service, then the baptisms, and then picnic lunch. We hope you can, you can stick around for all of it. Now, as we remember the 20th anniversary of 9-11, it's a time to also take in the amazing way that God works in spite of all the forces of evil in our world. Evil cannot stop God from working. I recently listened to uh, an interview with Dr. David Garrison, who wrote the book called A Wind in the House of Islam. Uh, Dr. Garrison has researched gospel movements among Muslim people where at least a thousand or more former Muslims have come to faith in Jesus and have been baptized as a part of their profession of faith. And these movements are taking place now all across the Muslim world. And you know when they began? Right after 9-11. At that time, many Muslims were confronted with the evil and hatred espoused by Islam for the very first time. And they began their own search for God. They realized that evil and that hatred was not who God was. And so they began their search for God and that led them to Jesus. And uh, the, the events of 9-11 are unspeakably evil. They always will be. But God, who is good, works in spite of these evil events. And here, hundreds of thousands of former Muslims are now followers of Jesus. Uh, and a result that the, the terrorist architects of those events would have shuddered to contemplate. And that's the mighty, powerful, and loving Lord that we serve. 
So, till we meet next time, let's continue to grow in our walk with the Lord. Let's honor those who protect and serve us and look for ways to share God's love with others. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Take care.